I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adjustments, uh, student of the month, and the student advisory council. Uh, the students are not here, so we'll skip over that. So, uh, first, before we go into, uh, before we go into, we will be going into executive session tonight for the purpose of considering the purchase, exchange, lease, or uh, value of real estate. No other votes will be taken following the committee's return from executive session, except for the vote to adjourn. That being said, I'll uh, accept the motion to accept both minutes from the February 19th Secretary of Treasurer's and School Committee. I'll make the motion. Hand over. Do we Go have ahead. a second? Cohasset. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay. And I'll move right into the Treasurer's report. Okay. We uh, sent it to you in the mail or you got it on your iPad. Uh, hopefully you'll notice there's a little Irish motif to it this month. I assume you guys got the same one I got. Sometimes they trick me. Okay, we did. <laughs> we got the same. Why one. would they do that to you? Oh, they do that occasionally. Okay. They put you on the last one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we, moving on to page one. Again, the interest rates are still flat. So we, we made a whole hundred and seventy dollars on one point three million dollars worth of investments this month. But I mean, there's, there's nothing we can do. That's that's what it is. Any questions on page one? Uh, page two are our, our revenues for the month of February, and February is a very quiet month. The only real revenue we received, again, we got one twelfth of our Chapter 78, $318,000. Any questions on the revenue page? All right, we'll move on to page three, which are expenditures. Uh, <coughs> some of the things I want to point out. Uh, item number two, uh, workers' comp is still a real savings of $27,000. Item three, unemployment. Uh, we have almost $19,000 left. We are still fighting a claim for an employee we terminated. If we lose it, uh, it will cost us 20, so we'll be short. Just to let you know that we might be, if we lose this claim, we'll be short in that category. Uh, professional improvement, I just want to mention that it has a minus in the month because we, we reclassed some information out of the budget into a grant, so that's why it's a minus. It doesn't mean we got revenue from it, but. We just moved something to, to a grant that was in the budget. Item 8, utilities. Uh, <coughs> I just want to mention that because of the winter, as of February 28th, the electricity and the gas accounts are about 30% ahead of what they were a year ago. Uh, we seem to have enough left, I think, in the, in the budget, so we're not going to have an issue. But again, March has been, been really cold, too. So as of the end of February, we, we had spent 30% more in electricity and, and uh, natural gas. Uh, item 23, books and instructional supplies. We're about at the same point we were a year ago in February as far as expenditures go. Item 27, uh, travel. Uh, we have an issue, we're going to have an issue in that uh, we had a student get a state award and they're going to a- out, Right, they're going to an out of state uh, competition that was not budgeted. Uh, so that that line is already six thousand dollars overspent. And if but not because of that, but because of the in state people. Skills USA. Right. Skills USA. We had a lot of people go to that. Right. So we overspent the in state line by six grand. The out of state line would appear to be going to be overspent also because of this other student. And we don't know yet if we're sending anybody to the nationals. That's correct. For skills. Maybe we'll luck out, we won't. We would like to, don't get me wrong. <laughs> right. Don't get me wrong, we would like to. But just to give you a heads up on that, we could have an issue in the travel category as we go down. And that's about <coughs> it, it's, it's kind of a quiet month right now. Anybody have any questions on anything, anything I did not mention? If not, we'll just go on to the pie charts. We have a Kelly Green motif market report this month. And uh, the month is kind of boring. That the revenue is only from school age chapter 70 and if you look year to date though again uh, 
the assessments up, up above on the revenue are still year to date uh, much more a bigger piece of the, of the pie than the chapter 70 school aid from the state and again that's what's been happening to us and down below you can see the largest Kelly Green piece is the salaries and wages which is our largest expenditure and the general expenses the blue piece is beginning to shrink as we get further into the year uh, any other questions if not, Mr. Chairman, that does it. There are no budget transfers. Uh, entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Second. Okay, we have Whitman and Abington. All those in favor? Unanimous. There are no budget transfers. I said. Uh, end of the year compliance review for fiscal year. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. This is. Uh, as part of the audit, the, uh, the auditors are required to uh, verify that the, the end of the year report we file is correct. And they have some procedures they have to do, and uh, they're called agreed upon procedures. And the letter says that they found nothing wrong, so we're in good shape. It should have been here last month, but they got tied up doing something else. And there's no need to accept it, it's just, it's just for information. Just for information only? Yes. Just to know that we're in compliance with the law. Okay, moving on to my report, uh, Secretary Treasurer Subcommittee. We had a meeting last month in which we uh, finalized down to four candidates, which we will be interviewing April 8th and April 10th, I believe, are the dates That's next right. month. So <coughs> I'll have a report for you in April on how that goes. That's where we stand with that right now. Uh, no subcommittee reports other than that one. Superintendent Director, Dr. Hickey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A brief report tonight. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to uh, turn, turn it over to Deb Collins to offer some brief remarks regarding our winter advisory meeting that we held uh, a well-attended event on March 5th. That's a program advisory night with all 14 of our vocational programs. Deb. Thank you very much. Um, first, I need to apologize for the weather. That night was snow. Last November we had torrential rain. Last year we had a mini blizzard. And I believe the one before that we also had some torrential rain. I'm sorry. We're covered for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we had an excellent turnout uh, in spite of the, the snow. Uh, the culinary arts students did an absolutely fantastic um, buffet. Once again, they were professional and trained well. <coughs> uh, every shop um, had advisors, they had uh, honest budget, had parents and students. Uh, it was well, well attended. I have all of the minutes, although it was rather cumbersome. Just as highlights, uh, most everyone talked about their curriculum, um, what was going on in the shop, the need for new equipment or not. Uh, everybody has chosen a chairperson. Uh, there are some people that are requesting more space, expansion, more storage. There is kind of a general theme in that. Um, but otherwise, it was well attended, and um, it was all in all a very good night. And I look forward to the general advisory committee meeting so that you all can hear right straight from the horse's mouth what they want. <coughs> if anybody would like a copy of the um, advisory minutes, I can get them to you. They are just a little bumpy. You. Thanks, Deb. It was a, it was a, a great turnout. Uh, just continuing on with my report, uh, Finance Committee uh, update. So since the last time we met, uh, Bob and I uh, met with Dan and the Whitman Finance Committee on February 22nd. And then on March 6th, Bob and I, along with Jack, went to Situate. We met with Situate's Advisory Committee. Uh, and last night, Chris and I went to uh, Hanson's Finance Committee. Uh, all three finance committees were very diligent in uh, review of the documents. They they continue to uh, excuse me. Yeah, forgive me. We also uh, we also met with uh, Abington on March 12th. Uh, all of the finance committees are very appreciative of the level of detail that uh, the business office puts together and that we supply, and uh, and that's very helpful. They ask. Uh, 
They're asking great questions about stabilization, the stabilization fund proposal, and also about our budget. So, uh, at this point, uh, <coughs> Jack went to a, in situate, Jack went to a meeting uh, the following Tuesday, the selectmen's meeting, where they went on record in support of the assessment as well as for the stabilization fund. And uh, that's great news. Uh, we continue, we're, we're going to continue uh, obviously with the process, but uh, for now we're pretty much where we would be in the middle of March in terms of outreach uh, with communities and we continue to remain available to provide, uh, to provide further information. So it's always good to be able to talk directly with our school committee representatives, uh, fellow townspeople to uh, hear what they have to say and the questions they have. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention, uh, I typically wouldn't do this, but the, your correspondence file has a few documents in it that I just want to bring to your attention. Nothing to digest right now, certainly. This is, uh, you know, <coughs> over the next month or so. But the statement of interest that you authorized me to submit for the boiler, the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program, I've given, I provided you a copy of all the documents <coughs> that were sent in to the MSBA. We await a decision in June on that, uh, on that proposal. Also in, also in the uh, correspondence file, amidst spring sports schedules and other items, is a, uh, is a memorandum from the Commissioner of Education, Mitchell Chester. Uh, next week, next Tuesday, there's a Board of Education meeting in Malden where one of the agenda items will be the Commissioner's proposal to make changes to Chapter 74 regulations. He talks about a variety of areas ranging from non-resident tuition to admissions and program approvals and things of that sort. Uh, this is something that is of, uh, of certainly of, uh, of interest. I won't, I won't use the word concern, that might be premature, but uh, I'm, certainly, uh, I'm certainly very interested in this and as Mob is <coughs> president next year, uh, I would certainly be playing a very active role in working with the Department of Education to ensure that any changes to Chapter 74 regulations will not somehow get in the way of the good work that regional vocational and agricultural schools put forth every day. That being said, uh, what the Commissioner says in his memo is that these are the themes that he wants to pursue with the Board. Uh, his timeline appears to be that in May the regulations he's looking to change will be put out in draft form. So typically what happens is he'll bring some proposed regulations to the board. They vote to put them out for public comment. So it is very likely that between May and, and his anticipated timeline of October that the conversations at this table around changes to Chapter 74 regulations, what does it mean, do the changes have an adverse impact, or maybe they don't, or maybe they improve things. Uh, certainly, uh, with the administrators uh, uh, helping me, we will uh, be able to articulate that, and we'll be in, in conversation with, um, with our, you know, our fellow vocational schools. So for now, the memo says a lot. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot there to, to digest. I would welcome any questions that you might have. Uh, MAVA's number one priority for the next year is to make sure that the integrity of Chapter 74 programs is maintained. And the way that you do that is you ensure that the regulations that are in place insist that if you're going to open a Chapter 74 program, that it is of high quality. You have to have proper equipment. You have to have appropriate staffing ratios. You have to have advisory committees, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not suggesting that that's disappearing. But this is a great opportunity to remind people that the law and the regulations that have been in effect for a long time have led us to be dubbed the Cadillac version of CTE vocational education. So that's the that's the mindset I'm taking go, going into the next six months on this topic. So I, I, if you had to pick a couple things out of the folder to take a look at, I'd encourage you to uh, to certainly take a look at that memo. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, not on here, but I'd just like to, um, although it's not totally done yet, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the uh, the fact that we have begun MCAS testing this week. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it has run flawlessly. Um, Margaret and the administrative team, as well as Mary Lou Merrick, paraprofessional Bob Francis, and almost every breathing adult that works for the South Shore Regional <laughs> School District <laughs> has played a part in ensuring that these tests are administered under the strictest testing conditions. 
and that we are accommodating all students' needs. It's being done efficiently. Uh, you, I, I, I can't tell you, just in the three years since I was overseeing it, the state has ramped up the level of oversight um, uh, unbelievably. And so Margaret and the crew have done a phenomenal job in, in making this, uh, from my vantage point, uh, just simply a non-issue. But if you come into the conference room, you'll see 3,000 bankers boxes filled with testing materials and whatnot, but it's, it's, um, they're just doing a great job. They're doing a great job and uh, it's a testament to their organization. So I'd like to just uh, make note of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If, uh, I'd be happy to continue. Or, uh, I'm ready. Thank you. Uh, for the second month, we have um, uh, the CIT programs, computer literacy basics uh, to bring to your attention. We'll move ahead with that, uh, we'll move ahead with that purchase. And under new business, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you. This is the point in the agenda where on an annual basis the school district uh, opens up a public hearing on school choice and then takes action after the public hearing closes. Okay. Is there a motion to suspend the regular meeting and open a public hearing? I make the motion. We second. Have a second. Second. Uh, Ann Whitman, all those in favor? Okay. Motion, please. I move that the oh, sauce. Oh, for, forgive me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so seeing that there's no... No public there's, there's no public comment. Right. Could we um, could we close the the hearing and then and then go to okay. The, thank you. Make, okay. a Make a motion to close the hearing. Do we have a second. Go Hassan. Hand over. Go Hassan. All those in favor? Approved. I make a motion that I move that the South Shore Regional School District not participate in the school choice choice program for the school year of 2014-2015 because the school district has an established process for admitting students who reside outside the school district. Do we have a second? Second. Whitman. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, now the next is the school council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, document 7 in your packet is the proposed school calendar for 2014-2015. And... Uh, I bring it to you this evening. Uh, I want to again thank our uh, administrative team for helping build this schedule. Uh, two, two things I'd like to point out to you, um, three things really. One, one is that uh, Friday, January 2nd is listed as a, a, uh, a day with no school. Um, because, we're st because we start after Labor Day, I did not think it would it was prudent to bring to you a recommendation for a uh, for an, a full two-week December vacation. But with New Year's Day falling on a Thursday, uh, bringing to you a recommendation that we we have uh, no school for students on that Friday. I don't think we'll uh, we certainly are just not going to have the same winter again. It's just it's just not going to happen. <laughs> and I'd like a, I'd like a motion on that as well. But uh, but le I'll at least uh, winter. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, maybe if that's the next fiscal year, we can't talk about that. But. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out to you is that after careful consideration and a lot of work on the part of our faculty, uh, our faculty council, our administrative team, we're making an adjustment that might not jump off the page to you as you have seen these calendars in the past with uh, uh, red and green numbers. We are, we are going to, for next year, have go back to a Monday through Friday uh, week about schedule. We went to a six-day cycle back in the late 90s in an effort to uh, make adjustments with uh, consistency of instruction. That was also around the same time that a little thing called MCAS was, uh, was on the horizon. And uh, there are no sacred cows in any part of an organization and we should always be willing to revisit things that we've established and you take what's good and you modify things and you try things that are new so this is this is not exactly a throwback because one of the one of the classic things that I remember as a teacher was that two and a half day week before Thanksgiving I remember the social studies classes that I would be teaching I'd see the kids Monday and Tuesday and a half a day on Wednesday and then see you later so the administrators took that into consideration when building the schedule so I think, and, and uh, a majority of our faculty are very, uh, are very interested in uh, in seeing this, seeing us try this back out again. And one of the uh, leading theories is that it will also open <coughs> doors for kids to participate in cooperative education. 
because the Monday through Friday schedule will mirror many workplace environments that run Monday through Friday. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I would uh, recommend this calendar for the committee to approve. We have a motion to approve the calendar. So we, so we Rockland? Second. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we got Hanson. All those in favor? Unanimous. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I could make one additional comment. Sure. I, would also, I would also like to uh, say thank you to our faculty uh, and especially the leadership of the Teachers Federation. Uh, one of the thing, one of the other new things for next year is that we will be experimenting uh, with an open house on a Saturday. So uh, everyone is on board with this. Uh, I'm very pleased that, uh, that when the, in the spirit of cooperation and experimentation, we will be scheduled, our open house will be scheduled on Saturday, November 15th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I think it's gonna be a great option to let families, who for most probably is not a work day, uh, we'll, see how, we'll see how things go. Great to show off this place in the daylight on a Saturday. Uh, and I'm thrilled that uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that this is going to be uh, an opportunity uh, to try out in November. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, next up we have a surplus declaration for a 1997 carpentry van and a 1999 Dodge van, Panasonic TV VCR combo with wall mount, wall mount arm. Walmart out. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been. I'll make <laughs> the vote. <laughs> okay, do we have a second? Second. Second, Abington. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, next item we have an out of state field trip. Outdoor Adventure Club, Adventure Bound, Paratump, Maine. Wow, I've heard of that. June 6th to 8th, 2014. We have a motion for, to approve the state, out of state. I'd like the motion to approve it. We'll pass it. Do we have a second? Hanover? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, warrants. Okay, warrants for approval. <coughs> warrants 16 and 17. Total $888,847.94. Do we have a second? Second. Second with them. All those in favor? Uh, unanimous. Request for action. <clears throat> I do. Um, <clears throat> I just like to bring forth to the committee something that I found out just today. Um, while I was in my office at the Board of Selectmen, I talked to my town administrator, and he had just previously, the day before, or that morning, or whatever, got off a, a phone call, conference call with the town of Abington, Rockland, and of course Whitman. And what they were looking at is they were looking at the assessment. And all three towns agreed that our assessment, plus their own school assessments, were very high and they couldn't afford it. And that they may not uh, support our budget. Uh, I know that uh, Frank Lynham, our town administrator, talked to, to Tom and suggested that maybe we take a look at our capital projects, which I've always said that uh, you know we should have that to look at and not touch the academic <coughs> aspect of our budget to what it takes on the school but the capital projects even though we support it can we afford it it's that simple and I know that we uh, really Tom couldn't bring it up today because we didn't have it in the agenda but I can bring it up as correspondence and, and what we're going with. And I think it's something that we need to look at because if Whitman, Rockland, and Abington can't afford our their assessment because it's increased so, then we don't have the talent that we need for the school. Um, my, I believe our finance committee was a little disappointed in me for voting the budget. Uh, I don't disagree with the budget. As I said the last meeting, I was a little apprehensive about voting for it. I thought it was a little heavy uh, on for the town, not the budget, but just what the towns could afford. And that's why I brought up the issue to Tom about if, in fact, we couldn't get all the towns to agree, or at least enough to pass the budget, can we be looking at some of the capital projects to bring the budget down? And I think that's what Frank suggested to you. 
and I think that's what maybe he convinced all the three towns talked about to see if, if in fact that that could happen and bring it down. Uh, to, he said that he gave you a number that he, you know, that if you could save, like the town of Whitman, I didn't, I don't know the number. I think he said like 25 or 30, 40, whatever, 25,000. That means that you have to cut a significant amount because we're a portion of that. And if we cut for Whitman, Abington, and Rockland, we're going to be cutting for the Hansons, for the Cohasses, for the Situates, and the Norwells. That's understood. So it's whether or not we can cut it to bring the budget down to where we can get six out of eight towns to approve it. And as I see it right now, and as Frank explains it to me, that the three town managers that out of the three towns that are with the highest assessment um, may not recommend at a town meeting, and, I, and that makes me nervous. As far as the capital uh, stabilization, I agree with it. Uh, I think we can do it. Whether or not we can assess some monies this year and put into it, I would rather go the route at the end of the year when we look at monies and we and we put monies towards other areas. Maybe that's one of the areas we can put it and start saving it, you know, if possible. We've done that in the past where we've cut a bus. At the end of the year, we've had enough money to be able to buy a bus and still give money back to the towns. Uh, we may want to go that route and not put it in the initial budget. Um, we're just gonna have to look at it, and, and, and I was worried about it. On another note, on a plus note, I was in Boston today at the uh, MB, at transportation building for the MBTA advisory board, and the uh, the doctor, I forget her name, who's in charge of the T, was asking us if we could relate to our schools. In Massachusetts, she doesn't see a lot of education in the transportation, what it takes to run a transportation system. Uh, New York and, and Chicago, where it's so huge, they do that in the school system. She doesn't know whether or not it would be in a vocational atmosphere or, or an academic. She, she's just saying there's a lot of aspects to transportation, and she would like to see the schools teach towards that because uh, you're talking about a billion dollar process in the state of Massachusetts in our transportation system. So it's just food for thought, maybe down in the future for some type of a class. If we can do it, well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, again, if you can yeah. give me the name of the person when you when you get a yeah, chance, right? I'll have to give her get your name. You can call her. I'd like to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's a, that's basically how our town feels, and and I think maybe at our next meeting, uh, if Tom uh, wants to talk to the three town administrators, you know, mm -hmm. and see get some feedback, and see where we can go, and we may want to look at it because we need to get the six out of the uh, eight towns, or we don't have a we don't have a budget. Thank you. Anyone else? No question that. Okay. Okay, now we're going to take a vote to go into executive session. Having yes. Rockland? Yes. Hanover? Yes. Titchwood? Yes. Hanson? Yes. 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 I just want to keep that motion for my records that you said earlier in the, be in the beginning. Walter Roll. No, in the beginning. Oh, yeah. So I get it right for the minute. Top one. Top piece. Oh, okay. Right? This is the reason why we're going for executive session. Exactly. Yeah. On a roll call vote. I just did the paper. Okay. <laughs> You're confusing me. <laughs> okay, we're Who made the motion? Second.